To me, it's almost that you're just a fucking weak man. If you are drinking alcohol, you are a weak man. If you're relying on alcohol, you are fucking pathetic. Yeah, you might not like to hear that. Like I said, I'm the asshole that everyone needs in their life. What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. Listen, today's topic, today's episode is probably going to piss a lot of people off. Actually, it's going to piss about 70% of the American population off. Yes, 70%, at least, probably more. And I'll let you know why in a second. Today's episode is going to be all about alcohol. And we're going to dive deep into it. We're going to go into some statistics, some personal stories. I'm actually going to share a couple of stories today that I've never shared before. And I talked about some drinking stories on other episodes, but I am going to share some stories in this episode that I personal stories I've never shared publicly, publicly or maybe even privately ever before on this episode. But we're also going to go into the deep, dark truth and details about alcohol here on the Steve Eckert Show. The Steve Eckert Podcast is a show on how to flip the switch and have a no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success, showing you how to operate to dominate in your mindset, your family, your fitness, and your business, so you could stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own fucking terms while you create your own personal freak freedom lifestyle. Now listen, a lot of what I say, some people will hate, but most can relate. I think in this episode, most people are going to fucking hate. All are going to be able to relate, but most are going to hate. And this is what I do. I talk shit for a living. I literally talk shit for a living. I talk shit to people for a living. I'm I'm the asshole that everyone needs in their life, and that's what I'm going to be here for you today on this episode of the Steve Eckert Show. Everyone needs an asshole like me in their life because some people need someone that's going to tell them what they fucking need to hear, not just what they want to hear. So we're going to break down this... Alcohol, the thought of alcohol on, on several different levels. We're going to start on the family side. We're going to go into some statistics. We're going to break it down. Now, listen, let, let's, let's talk about men. Let's talk about men and what really drags men down. The, the, th- the, the three things that if men can overcome, they'll be on their way to self-mastery. And I'm not adding in like discipline or fitness. Those are the pillars that are going to build men up. But I'm just talking about the The things that men need to overcome, the demons that men need to overcome in order to have self get get to self-mastery. And listen, here's what it is. The three things that bring men down and they need mastery and self-control over are daddy issues. And I'm just saying daddy issues. It could be parents, but it's most likely going to be their daddy issues, some kind of fucked up childhood or some shit that happened in their childhood, good or bad, whatever it is, we're calling it daddy issues. Number one is daddy issues. Number two is drugs and alcohol, and number three is women problems, either chasing them or not, not, not dealing with that situation the right way, probably based off of having those daddy issues, which led to the drugs and alcohol, which led to the women problems. Again, not taking care of your own or whatever that means on that subject, you get the point. Now, Let's break it down, the, the, the daddy issues, the past, the history. My father was a freaking drunk. And guess what? His father was a drunk. And if we went back further than that, I'm sure there is a long chain of it. That's why we call it breaking the cycle. I do another podcast with both kids, literally called breaking the cycle, because that's what it's about, breaking the cycle of weak, lack of positive male role models in kids' lives. It's freaking crazy. So my father was drunk. His father was a drunk. And listen, my kids have seen me drunk before. I talked about, I think it was in episode number two. I talked about a a time when they saw me drunk, puking all over the place, just acting the fool. And that's when I actually stopped drinking and will never drink for the rest of my life. I will never have a sip of alcohol for the rest of my life. It's already been, I don't even know, 
I don't even know the date. I wish I knew the day, but it was at least probably five years ago. And I will never have a sip the day to the, for the rest of my life, to the day I die. Here's the thing about alcohol. Here's the thing that most of you probably aren't going to like out there. The way I see and view alcohol, there is no upside to alcohol. There's no bonus to alcohol. The way I see it, if you drink, especially if you drink regularly or excessively, you have a, you're using it as a crutch. This is your vice. This is your escape. If you're drinking regularly or even drinking at all, if you drink alcohol, to me, it's almost that you're just a fucking weak man. If you are drinking alcohol, you are a weak man. If you're relying on alcohol, you are fucking pathetic. Yeah, you might not like to hear that. Like I said, I'm the asshole that everyone needs in their life. It's a fucking weakness. It's bullshit. It's having effects on your family. You know how many people I've seen that have been crushed in the downfalls of, of families and empires and men from alcohol? And we didn't even get to the other stuff. The daddy issues. And, and you could mix, add drugs into this and all kinds of other shit. But we're talking specifically just alcohol, not even getting into the other stuff yet, which then this stuff leads to the women problems, the family problems, the divorce problems, and all this other vices and all this other bullshit. But the effects that alcohol is having on your family, if you are a regular drinker, you are a fucked up, weak, bitch ass motherfucking man. Yeah, you probably don't like the way that sounds because it probably stings a little bit and I hope it does and it should if that's you. It's affecting your fucking family. It's affecting your kids. It's affecting your relationship with your kids. It's affecting their future. That's what you are leading. That's the type of role model mindset you are showing in life. I've seen so many successful people fall down. Successful, rich, people that from the outside you'd look at and, and would think that they have it all together. The perfect life, no problems, and alcohol will be Thor's hammer that comes fucking crushing down. And smash them like the pathetic motherfuckers that they are. Do you know, let's get into some statistics here. It's fucking crazy. The research that I did for this, some of the numbers are fucking mind-boggling. Do you know the statistics that 26% of people 18 years and older, and this is just who admitted to it. So if you think 26%, I would say that's at least going to be 20% higher of who didn't even admit to it. Of course, whatever, studies and whatever else. But let's just go with the numbers that that were in these studies. 26% of people 18 and older reported binge drinking in the last month. 26% of people 18 and older binge drink in the last month. 29% of that, 29% of men reported it and 22% of women. So the men are the higher drunks. Do you know that? Then, then I think it was 8%, or sorry, 6%, 6.5% reported they were heavy alcohol users. And that led to 8% of men. 8% of men in the United States are heavy alcohol users. Not just a lot. We're talking fucking heavy, stumbling, bumbling fucking drunks. At least monthly. Heavy alcohol use. 8.5% of men. That's fucking nuts. of 18 years and older, not even 21 years and older, which is the the legal age to drink or whatever, 26% 18 and older binge binge drink and 6% of adults admit to heavy alcohol use. I would say that's going to be up by at least 20 to 30% of the real numbers. Do you know that alcohol is a, a significant cause of death in the United States? Like, it's fucking nuts. You know that more than 95,000 people die every year in the United States due to alcohol-related bullshit? 95 fucking people die. That's an average. 95,000. That's an average of 261 deaths per day in the United States. 261 deaths per day, alcohol-related deaths. That's fucking nuts. That's fucking crazy. We didn't even get, and we're not even getting into drugs and whatever else. Just alcohol. It's fucking wild. Here's the funny thing. When you research these things, they don't talk about, they don't use the word drunk or alcoholic or anything anymore. Now they call it alcohol use disorder, AUD. 
Are you fucking kidding me? We're so worried about hurting motherfuckers' feelings in this weak-ass country. That's why men are just fucking soft and drinking and drunk with their bitch tits and their fucking beer bellies. They call it a beer belly for a reason because you're drinking too much, you fat motherfucker. But they can't even call him a drunk or an alcoholic anymore. They're not an alcoholic. They're not a drunk. They're not a stumbling, bumbling fucking fool. They're not a lush or whatever else you want to fucking call them. They call it alcohol use disorder. Oh, you have an alcohol use disorder, sir. Motherfucker, you're a fat drunk. You're pathetic. You're a weak fucking man. There's no AUD. Alcohol use disorder is what it's officially called. So we don't offend the drunk motherfuckers who are dying 95,000 times a year, who are, and then the families they're affecting. Holy fuck. It's fucking crazy. All right, so let's go with the alcohol use disorder. Especially when they talk about kids or women, they have to say alcohol use disorder. But if it's a man, they'll probably say that drunk motherfucker, that fucking turd bag. Alcohol use disorder. Do you know in the United States per year, There are 298,000 boys ages 12 to 17 that have an alcohol use disorder. Here's the the crazy thing. We're talking ages 12 to 17. Girls age 12 to 17 are even worse. And I'm going to say it's probably due to their fucked up alcohol use disorder fathers. But 596,000 girls 12 to 17. That's fucking, these numbers are like mind boggling. But then when it gets over 18, it shifts to men like significantly. I don't know if it's the boys are lying or if those numbers, I don't know the reasoning behind that switch. Listen, if you have an idea of why, why is it that 12 to 17, it's almost double the amount of girls, but then over 18, the men just take over and dominate the fucking being drunk asshole division. Probably because society shifts so much blame and pressure on the men. That's why men are more likely to be in prison, more likely to be violent criminals, more likely to be the victim of violent crime, more likely to much higher level of suicide. I'm guessing that all has something to do with it. But what do you think? What do you think are the reasons why up to 17, it's a lot higher girls. After that, boom, the men take over on the drunkenness, fucked upness. Yeah, that's just some fucking words. Alcohol, youth disorder. You're drunk. You're a fucking drunk. You can't put the bottle down. You have no fucking self-discipline. No, alcohol use disorder. You're a fucking lush. That's what it is. And then they break, the numbers are broken down into races and ethnicity and all this other stuff. And of course, the, the whites dominate. White and Hispanic actually dominate the numbers by far. It's fucking wild. It's it's crazy. And then let's go to over 18. So over 18. It's, some, it's close to 30 million adults, 18 and older, have AUD. Drunk motherfuckers, basically. AUD, a.k.a. drunk motherfucker. That's fucking nuts. 30 million people have alcohol use disorders. I wonder the fucking weasel that sat in there, probably makes like a couple hundred thousand dollars a year at some university, that probably spent like two years on writing a thesis on alcohol use disorder and came up with that term. Probably took them years to do that. I want to meet that motherfucking weasel. I bet you, I bet you he's a drunk fat motherfucker that came up with that. And he had to just word it so it sounded a little, did a little bit of wordsmithing to make it not sound so bad. Anyway, anyway. And of those 30, almost 30 million adults, 18 and older, 18 and older, keep in mind, 21 is the legal drinking age, but whatever. 18 and older, there's almost 30 million with that are alcoholics. And out of those, 16 million are men and only 12 million are women when it gets 18 and older. The second it goes to 18, it just swaps like drastically. It's fucking wild how that works. And the first group, don't forget, was 12 to 17. Like, how the fuck are 12 year olds even on that list? Like, where the fuck are the parents? Where is the father? I guarantee that 12 to 17 year olds that have the alcohol use disorder, I guarantee you at least 80% of those are from single parent homes. I fucking guarantee it. Sure it is. 
let's just keep going with the statistics because these are so fucking mind-boggling. I usually don't like to nerd you down with a bunch of numbers, but these are so fucking mind-blowing that it fits into this conversation that in the, like 10% of U.S. kids, 17 and younger, over 10%, live with a parent who has alcohol use disorder. That's almost 8 million kids. If you think about it, 8 billion people, 7.5 billion people, whatever the fuck number is. If, oh no, that's, a, that's the planet, sorry. But if 10%, maybe this is of the world, this one. I'm pretty sure it's US. 17 and younger, kids who are 17 and younger, 7.5 million of them live with a parent who has an alcohol use disorder. So they're living in a house with a dysfunctional, fucked up, drunk parent, probably abusive, any of the ways of physical, mental, emotional, sexual, social, whatever kind of abuse is possible, probably some form of abuse going on with that. I'm guessing a good percentage of those play the 80-20 rule. I'll say 80% of them are fucking abusive. It's fucking crazy. Do you know that in, this is from a couple of years ago, and I'm sure it's even increased, driving accidents caused 13,000, almost 14,000 deaths in the United States. That's over 31% of all driving accidents were alcohol related. A third of driving deaths, of car accident related deaths, had alcohol in the mix. A fucking third of just car accidents. Don't forget, there are 95,000 deaths a year that are alcohol related. But just from accidents, almost 15,000 of those, 30% of driving fatalities are from fucking drunk assholes. Holy shit. Do you know that 21% of suicide in this country have alcohol in their system? 21% of suicides have alcohol in their system at the time of suicide. Fucking nuts. This is, these, nut, these numbers, and I know we're just going overboard on these fucking numbers, but it's worth it to dig into these because you don't even realize these things. Do you know that more than 140,000 people die from alcohol-related causes, meaning that there, there was alcohol-related, not even just direct. So some of those could be the car accidents, but also uh, things of like that lead to health issues or whatever caused by the alcohol. It's the fourth alcohol-related cause, causes death in this country year, every year is the fourth leading preventable, preventable cause of death in the United States behind tobacco, poor diet, poor, di- poor diet and physical inactivity is one of the top three causes of death in this fucking country and then illegal drugs. So think about that list. Think about how easy it is to fucking just dominate in life. Work out and eat healthy. Don't fucking drink and smoke or do drugs. Boom. You just eliminated the top four preventable causes of death in this country. You just added literally fucking decades to your life. It's fucking crazy. So when people drink, they did like all these numbers boil down to people making stupid fucking decisions. They do stupid shit. They say stupid shit. They get that liquid courage where all of a sudden they're Billy Badass. And they're going to fucking fight off, take on the world. They're fucking fighting world champion or some shit. It gives them that liquid courage to do stupid shit, say stupid shit. They make judgment mistakes. This, this, this is one of the stories that just came to mind today I was thinking about. I one time, when I first came out of the Marines, I bought this, this Mazda Protégé, this little black four-door car. I got a fucking great deal on it from someone that was at a, a chop shop in, in New York and they sold me this great deal for a couple thousand dollars. It was a pretty new car, not a ton of miles on it. Bought it for just a couple thousand dollars. Literally like a week after I, I had it, I, I was fucking drunk. And I was driving like a fucking idiot over the Bear Mountain Bridge in New York. If you know anything about the New York area, when you cross the Bear Mountain Bridge, you go to the right, it goes towards some area of Westchester. If you go to the left, it goes towards like Fishkill. When you go to the right, it goes across the cliffs. These windy cliffs are about three or four miles. We're talking sharp turns literally on a cliff that if you miss by a split second, you're going dropping hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet down this mountainside, down this cliff, part of it into the fucking Hudson River. And I'm driving there fucking trashed. 
I think it was going to meet someone or pick someone up or something. And I'm driving, winding across there like 50, 60 miles an hour. It's probably like a 25 mile an hour zone. Just whipping, screeching, drunk as fuck. Literally one millimeter away from death at least a million times from driving drunk. And I missed at the end of the windy stuff. There was like a, a, a way to go left or right. I missed the turn I needed to go on. And just peeled out backwards, screeched the tires, and rammed the whole back of my fucking car into this pole. Car I just fucking got, just got out of the Marines. And crashed this fucking car, driving drunk. After I don't know how I didn't die on this swervy road. Smashed in a fucking new car. Like, holy shit. What a stupid move. Alcohol. Crushed that car, almost killed me a million times that night. Before the Marines, out in, I actually told this story to the kids on one of our Breaking the Cycle episodes that it hasn't, I don't know if it's released yet, but I was arrested in Wildwood, New Jersey in a, a hotel party, just wasted, 17 years old, drunk as hell, getting arrested, getting handcuffed to a whole like 10 other people, thrown in the back of a fucking paddy wagon, taking us to the police station with the dude next to me puking all over everyone while we're all chained together getting arrested in, in New Jersey and then never, and then having a warrant for my arrest because I missed court dates and then whatever else happened like three hours away down in, in New Jersey in Wildwood during Memorial Day weekend, alcohol related. Shit, me and the Russian, before we were even married, before we had kids, would go out to parties, go out in New York City and go, dr- go drinking and just get wasted and trash. One time I remember we woke up in a subway station in New York City. It was Halloween night. We met my sister and we had to get back to Rockland County or back to Long Island or somewhere. And all the trains were shut down for the night because it was like four in the morning. We had to wait till the next train at like six. We get there fucking hammered, wasted with all the fucking crackheads and the drug dealers and all this back in when the, the subways used to be fucking even, well, now they're back to probably shit again. And I remember drunk as shit, like puking in the subway. And it's just the two of us. And looking around and bugging out that, because it was Halloween, after a Halloween party in New York City, and there's people in all these different costumes. I remember this big fucking cow, dressed as a cow, being so drunk and out of it, and then seeing Superman and Catwoman and all this SpongeBob motherfucking square pants. Just your head is spinning. I don't even know how we made it out of that place alive. I don't know how we ever made it home. That had to do with alcohol. Another time, this one definitely never shared. Pretty sure ever in public, probably never to anyone. This was also after the Marines were on vacation in Cancun, Mexico. I'm a fairly fit guy. We're at the beach. It's a beach club in Cancun. They're partying. It's all inclusive. So when you go to those resorts, you could just drink as much as you want all day. You literally wake up in the morning, you go in the pool and there's a bar in the pool and you start fucking drinking alcohol at the pool. So you're trashed all day long. We're in the nightclub at nighttime down there in Cancun, the big fucking party spot. And they're having some contest on stage for men, like a a male fitness dance competition. I already know what the fuck it was. And the fucking dude points at me, so I get on the stage, and I have no shirt on on the stage, drunk as fuck. And there's the stage, and they said, whatever you do, don't go into the crowd. There's a massive crowd but there was a, a, a little like pillar, what's it, like a, a pole, maybe like t- eight, six, ten feet away from the crowd that was like in the crowd. I jumped over the crowd onto this pillar, which they said don't do because they didn't want people getting hurt or involved in this like fitness challenge, whatever, men's body competition or something. And I was so drunk, I jumped over the crowd and landed at, yeah, Tyson, my cameraman's watching. He's never heard this story. He's like making these faces right now like what the fuck? Who is my dad? So listen to this. So it it ain't done. I jump over the crowd onto this pole thinking that's going to give me some points to the crowd because the winner got like, I don't know, a thousand pesos. It was like $10 or some shit. I wanted that fucking money. I wanted them motherfucking pesos. So I thought if I put this big scene, I jump over the crowd and land on the thing. These fucking security guards, these cops, like the, the Mexican police there, grab me off of that pole and yank me back onto the stage, drag me under like backstage and there's this metal staircase and they're yanking me and they flopping me like a little rag doll I'm drunk as fuck and there's like two or three of them and they pull me and there's a metal staircase and my head dink clinks on the metal staircase and blood starts pouring down my fucking head and they're kicking me out of the place 
But I still want to fucking win this competition. And just as a backup plan, there were like six or eight guys in this competition. And five of us made an agreement that if any one of us won, we're going to split it. There were three douchebags that didn't want to join the split. So they wanted the money all to themselves. So five of us agreed that we're in it. We're backstage. We're backstage. They're getting us wasted. They give us so much alcohol. And some of them, they're giving drugs, whatever. And they get us wasted to go out there. But five of us agreed. If any of us win, we're going to split it. And we're complete strangers. So five of us agreed to that. And these other three said they're not going to do it. So one of the five that was in that group of five actually won this thing. So I didn't want to get kicked out. They're kicking me out of this, this bar now. I'm like, fuck, I have a five in eight chance of winning this thing. I can't win myself because they're going to kick me out. But one of our five could win. I want this motherfucking pesos. So I had to pay the guy. I knew how much we were going to make. Say it was $20 we were going to get our cut of that. I said, all right, I'm going to pay this guy $10. I gave the, the cop money, security guard, where the fuck he was, half of what I was going to win just to stay in there so I could win my other half. It all worked out. I won the money. I've got even, I have some pictures of this. You know what I even actually have? Somewhere on some old like VHS camcorder recording of this somewhere. It exists somewhere out there. I don't know where, but now I'm going to be interested in trying to find that. It might've got ruined in a flood in New York. I'm not sure, but there was actual videotape of this entire thing I'm talking about. Videotape footage on some old like VHSC camcorder. We carried a camcorder out there. And actually, one of the guys in this competition was one of the original, it just happened to be, he was in Cancun at the same time, one of the Power Rangers. Like the TV show Power Rangers, it was one of the Power Rangers. I don't know what fucking color, the Green Ranger or the White Ranger or some shit. It was literally one of the Power Rangers in this same competition of this show. Fucking crazy shit. Yes, Tyson, my cameraman, is behind the scenes right now, behind the camera. He's just like, what the fuck did you just talk about? Yeah, this is all true fucking story. I got my head split open on a thing, drunk at some like male hot body competition with a Power Ranger in fucking Mexico. All because of fucking alcohol. Let's just say my alcohol dance performing days are over. I've also, I did, I, that one time of crashing the car wasn't the only time I drive, drove drunk. But I obviously would never doing that anymore. And I even have a, a solution to driving drunk. I have a solution to driving drunk. Imagine this. Imagine if you got caught driving drunk, you lost your license. Like, I think you lose it for like a month or a year if you're found guilty and you probably get let off the hook and you get like three or four chances and warnings. Imagine if the very first time you got caught driving drunk, you lost your driver's license for life. You're never allowed to drive. That would solve drive, drunk driving. That would solve all these deaths that I'm talking about in those statistics. Let's say this. What about even the first time you get caught driving drunk? You go to prison for 10 years. And then if it happens again, maybe you go to prison for life. Or maybe it happens one time, you go to prison for life. Imagine if those kind of things existed. Those deaths would stop fucking happening. Motherfuckers would get smart real quick and call a motherfucking Uber. Imagine that if you're going to jail for 10 years, or losing your license for 10 years, or going to jail for life, or losing your license for life. But let's transition to nutrition. I like to stay fit and healthy. Alcohol has absolutely no benefit. It just makes you hungover. It fucks up your workouts the next day. You get dehydrated because people ask me all the time, well, I'm looking to get in shape. What's the best alcohol that I could drink that's going to do like, what's the best thing I should drink if I'm going to be partying? None, motherfucker. Have some fucking discipline. Stop being a little bitch. None. Have some fucking self-control and self-regulation and motherfucking discipline. What's the best alcohol? No alcohol is good for weight loss or good for staying fit or good for building muscle. It does absolutely nothing for you. Absolutely nothing for you. There's no useful benefit of alcohol in your body. There is no upside to alcohol in your fucking body. A a 12-ounce glass of beer is 150 calories. A five ounce glass of red wine is 125 calories. A one and a half shot of of alcohol is is 100 calories. A shot, one shot of alcohol in general, where of course, give or take, fucking 100 calories. And you're pounding those shots back of of a substance that's gonna first of all fuck you up, it's gonna dehydrate, it's gonna make you make bad decisions, it's gonna make you sleep in, it's gonna fuck up your workout, it's gonna make you hungover, it's gonna make you have shitty performance. Some days, some you drunk motherfuckers take two, three days to recover from being drunk. There is no fucking need. Like I said earlier, it's called the fucking beer belly for reasons. So stop being a, a lazy, undisciplined, fat fuck and stop making excuses. 
That shit just sits in your gut, it gets fucking stored, and gets used for absolutely fucking nothing. And then I'm going to finish off with this. For you social drinkers, I'm just a social drinker. I use it just to relax, to kick back after a hard day at work. Listen, motherfucker, if you need alcohol to be fun, or if you need alcohol to start a conversation, or to be the life of the party, or to deal with your family, or to be a party person, or to socialize, or to go speak to the girl you want to go speak to, or to give you some fucking courage, or to relax, guess what? You're a weak, pathetic motherfucker. You're a fucking loser. If you need alcohol to do any of those fucking things, it's bullshit. It's a fucking excuse. Quit the bullshit. Put the fucking drink down and put in the fucking work so you can be the energetic, fun conversation starter that can deal with different situations that come, that knows how to fucking relax, that knows how to go talk to the woman you want to go talk to, that has the courage to step up and do the shit you want to do, that can still go to a party or can still go out to dinner and not need to fucking drink to fit in. Fucking peer pressure? Are you in fucking junior high school, motherfucker? Like, quit that shit. That shit ain't cool. Neither is that beer belly or those fucking bitch tits. That shit ain't cool either. And then the way you act when you're fucking drunk is definitely not fucking cool. And the way your kids are looking at you when your dumb ass is fucking drunk all the time is absolutely not fucking cool. They are not looking at you. Your kids are not looking at you when you're this drunk, bumbling fucking idiot or alcohol use disordered fucking dumbass. They're not looking at you like, wow. That's my dad. I want to be just like my dad. That's my role model. Look at that fat, drunk motherfucker. He's so cool. I bet all the dads around town would kick his fucking ass. No kid is saying that ever, motherfucker. So put the drink down. Quit the fucking alcohol. And have some motherfucking self-discipline, self-respect, self-awareness, and self-regulation. You don't need it. There's no use for it. Put it down, motherfucker. And listen, I want you to share this video with that motherfucker that you know that needs to hear it. Probably yourself needs to hear it, but send it to that motherfucker you know needs to hear it. I want to hear below, what are your alcohol stories? Share your alcohol stories with me down in the comments. I want to hear the shit you never told him. I just shared some shit about Mexico. I literally have never told that story ever out loud in my life. And I'm just sharing it here with you on a fucking podcast. Tyson's back there shitting his pants because of this thing. He got his shitting pants on. So tell me about your stories, your alcohol-related stories. What do you know about it? What have you experienced with it? What have you seen with your family, your friends? What downfalls have you seen? Share it. Like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. And stop fucking drinking. It's fucking weak. And you're a weak motherfucker if you do. Yeah, you don't like it, but it's the fucking truth. And I'm the asshole you need in your life. I will see you next time on the Steve Eckert Show podcast. And in case no one told you yet today... As long as you're not drinking, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.